Hey everyone, how's it going? Today in this video, I'm going to walk you through five ways to overcome limiting beliefs. So we'll talk about what is even a limiting belief? Uh, what are some of the most popular limiting beliefs? And then I'm going to walk you through uh, these five steps. Feel free to save this video or audio if you need to go back to it. But I, I really just think even if you just take it in, um, I'm going to draw a little bit to make it easier for you to catch it. I think you'll be able to find at least one thing that is, is helpful for you. So as I am speaking, if you're catching this on video, I would really appreciate it if you would just jot down like the one thing that stuck out to you or resonated with you just as you're going through. So the first thing that we need to talk about is what is even a limiting belief and why does it matter? So the definition of a limiting belief is pretty simple. It's just something that you believe that puts limits on your abilities. I think it's really helpful to understand that we have both, a lot of people talk about limiting beliefs, but we have both empowering beliefs and we have limiting beliefs. And so if we're gonna believe stuff and if we're gonna live life, what we wanna do is focus on nurturing our empowering beliefs, not on focusing our limiting beliefs. I don't know if you ever heard that story about the wolf, uh, no, I'm going to, I'm going to kill this story. This person and they have like a, a bad wolf and a good wolf. And one wolf is really positive And the other wolf is mean and bad and greedy and all of those things. And some grandfather's telling some kid uh, about these wolves. And, he's, and the kid is like, well, how do you make sure that the good wolf wins? And the grandfather says, well, that's the one that you feed, right? So if we feed our empowering beliefs and we starve our limiting beliefs, we don't give them a chance to keep going, then we're going to move into action. We're going to be more impactful. We're going to be able to um, have a better overall quality of life, better, better relationships, all of those things. And so that's why I think we need to figure out how do we overcome these? How do we switch from nurturing limiting beliefs uh, to nurturing our empowering beliefs. I think it's helpful to, I think one of the hardest things is to not even realize that um, what our limiting beliefs are. I think one really easy exercise is to just write down a list of all your beliefs and then just to the right put limiting, empowering, limiting. But here's a few really uh, common ones that I've seen over the past seven years in coaching in the network marketing space. Certainly I have my own um, that I can go through, but I don't know if that's going to be as useful for you. So the first is going to be uh, limiting beliefs about the business. So things like sales is icky, um, network marketing, nobody wants to do this. I can't teach others about health because I'm not perfectly healthy. I'm an introvert. Those are limiting beliefs about the business. Um, most people don't catch that those are also limiting beliefs. Uh, the second type of limiting beliefs is probably the one we're most most aware of. Limiting beliefs about ourselves. I'm bad at blank, time management, recruiting, leadership. I don't have what it takes, so generally self-doubt. I'm overwhelmed. What I think or say doesn't matter. Uh, the third type of limiting belief is going to be about others. Uh, so things like they don't want to do this. People don't like to give referrals. Now, those are also limiting beliefs about the business, um, but those are generally like decisions that we make or beliefs that we have about other people that aren't really helpful. And so we want to see how can we how can we smash uh, these particular limiting beliefs and then replace them with empowering belief. So let me uh, pull this up for you. All right, so the first way to um, switch your limiting beliefs from limiting to empowering is to do a skill assessment. Um, one of the limiting beliefs is like, I'm bad at recruiting. And when we do a skill assessment, that's really simple. So we look at a scale of one to three or zero to three. Uh, zero means I've never done this. I've never even attempted. Uh, one means I try this and I stink or I'm just starting. Two means I can do this consistently and get results. And three means I'm a rock star. I can run a training at it. Uh, the skill assessment, when you break down all the different skills inside the network marketing process, and you just assign yourself a score 
zero, one, two, three. At first it stings, but it's truth, right? One of the best ways, probably the only way to overcome limiting beliefs is with truth, right? So instead of being like, why is this happening to me? A skill assessment pulls us into, why is this happening to me, right? And it pulls in the parts of our brain that can think critically and make plans as opposed to like having an amygdala hijack. I'm like, oh, I'm so bad, right? So it's much more empowering to say, I'm a skill level zero at recruiting and I'm working toward a skill level two than it is to say, I'm a bad recruiter. So once we have that empowering belief, it shifts the way we look at things. Uh, the second strategy is to be diligent about tracking progress. Uh, my favorite thing for this is the five minute journal. Um, and it is an app that asks you uh, in the morning, uh, what are three things you're grateful for? What are three things you're going to do to make today awesome? Uh, what's an affirmation? And then the next, in the evening, it triggers you to say, you know, what are three great things that happened today? What's the one thing you could do to make today better? It like just smashes all of them, right? Because when you fill this out for your business, you're like, here are the three things I'm grateful for in my business. Here are the three things I'm going to do today. Well, once you put it in there, you're just more likely to do them, which action also helps with limiting beliefs, right? And then at the end of the day, you're like, oh, here are the three things I did. And so now you're tracking your progress. You do this for 30 to 60 days. There's absolutely no way, like, try me, that your business would shift. So if you're really serious about it, but you don't want to do like, I don't believe in all the hard work. Uh, people are like, do the work on yourself. I got to do the work. I got to power through this. Like, I'm not interested in that. I'd rather do a five minute self skill assessment. And yeah, it might sting, but it's not hard to do. I'd rather do the five minute journal than, you know, cry all the time. So be diligent about tracking progress. We have a tendency to forget what we should remember and remember what we should forget. Uh, let's see, what's the third one here is commitment to being. Oops, to being dot, dot, dot. So this comes from a bunch of uh, affirmation research. Uh, the, the short version of this is just saying like, I am blank, like we'll use the recruiting example. I am a good recruiter is not, uh, is not actually gonna be very useful. It might work for a small percentage of people, but for the majority of the population as proven by social science, um, it's, you're actually gonna actively fight against that belief. So when we say, if you're not a good recruiter and you're like, I'm a good recruiter, your mind is going to send evidence to be like, no, that's wrong. Uh, but instead, if you say, I am committed to being a good recruiter, that's different. That's believable, right? I am committed to asking each new customer if they want to know how to earn money with the business. That is a commitment to being or a commitment to doing. And it works much better than what I think most people use for affirmations. Uh, number four, immerse yourself in a positive culture. I didn't even realize one of my biggest living beliefs recently was um, I need to be successful. That sounds like an empowering belief. It was actually really limiting. I didn't realize that until I was listening to a podcast um, and I heard it. Uh, being with other people, when I have the opportunity to uh, chat with my business partner, Karen, or my coach, Heather, or my friends, Jenna and Carla uh, in the business, when they're talking, it like brings awareness to, oh my gosh, that's a blind spot for me. I didn't even realize it. Um, and that's really helpful. Or if they're talking, um, they can encourage me and whatever limiting belief that I was stuck in back in July, I was like, kind of, I was in a mental funk and I was over at Jenna's and we were working on stuff for our business. And I just said something, she's like, hold on right now. And she just like ripped into me. She's like, you are so good. I don't ever wanna hear you say that again. And what's really interesting is we need to pay attention to the environments that we're in. Um, me surrounding myself with Karen and Heather and just like head down working has always been the best culture for me. Um, I stepped into a group coaching program 
a little over a year ago. We got some good tactics that was helpful, but truthfully, just the way the culture was set up, it was not a bad culture at all, but it brought out some of my worst qualities um, and it wasn't helpful. So we have to look at our environment and not say, should this should bring out my best qualities, but like actually does it. And if it does stay and if it doesn't leave, I think this is why we find people do really well when they're in our masterminds because we have a really specific schedule and how to do things and all of that and a lot of accountability mechanisms. And so then they, they're like, I'm ready. I got this. I'm ready to go fly. And, but then they leave that positive culture and all their limiting beliefs come like roaring back. So uh, make sure you have a positive culture and that you're intentional about that. And uh, number five is the thought reframe process. And so our thoughts lead to emotions, which lead to um, actions, which leads to results. Uh, so if we change our thought, we can change our results. So let's go back to this example that we're talking about in this video. I'm not a good recruiter. So is that true is the first question, uh, I guess. But what's more true? What's more true is maybe haven't invited anyone to a recruiting conversation in six months. That's true. Um, okay, so if I write down the thought, I haven't invited anyone to a recruiting conversation in six months. Now my emotion is like, I feel urgent, like, oh, I need to do that, right? And then my action might be doing that. And then my result would lead to people interested in the business. And so sometimes just by journaling or brain dumping, um, your thoughts on paper really, really help to get rid of those limiting beliefs because you can really quickly shift the thought, um, change it to something that's more true, which creates a completely different result. So just to recap, there are five ways that are proven to overcome limiting beliefs. Number one, do a skill assessment. Number two, be diligent about tracking progress. Number three, make commitments to being blank, whoever it is that you want to be. Number four, immerse yourself in a positive culture. And number five, engage in a thought reframe. If this was helpful for you and this resonates with you, I want to make sure that you know that we would love to have you in one of our eight or nine week masterminds um, to help you work through the limiting beliefs, but also the skills necessary uh, to make success in your business happen. So uh, wherever you're watching this um, or listening to this, I'm sure there is some sort of instructions um, on how to contact us uh, regarding our masterminds. We would love to have you. I hope this was helpful for you and have a great day.